have a couple of announcements for you this morning. Um, first, just to let you know, we are going to have a congregational meeting next Sunday morning. And the congregational meeting is to elect our nominating committee from the members at large from our congregation. And because we are a one congregation in two different places on Sunday morning, the congregational meeting will open here and will close at the end of our 11 o'clock service. So we'll have a congregational meeting next Sunday morning to elect members of the nominating committee at large. So that's for your information. And also, you'll see there's a table when you come in the door at the front for Backpacks of Love. So we're collecting food here and over in the education building. So you can drop food off here for our Summer Backpacks of Love program. And also, Jesus on the Go has been everywhere. And randomly throughout the summer, we have a Where is Jesus contest. So you'll see Jesus and then something in the background, and everybody who answers the question correctly gets put in a pot, and then the name gets drawn out. And this week, Jennifer Perkins was the winner of our Where is Jesus contest. Jesus is at Zoe's Kitchen this week. So pay attention to the Jesus on the go. The, um, the, the Instagram page and the Facebook page, you'll see the same thing on there. And if you enter, then you get a chance to win a couple of contests this summer. So that's where Jesus on the go has been. And we are really excited. We know that it is 4th of July. We're leading up to 4th of July and all those things. So today, over at the 11 o'clock service, we have a patriotic cantata prayer for America. So if you are feeling like you need to get a little extra worship today, we invite you to go over to the Patriotic Cantata at 11 o'clock as well. And now, friends, I'm going to ask if you would join me in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we just thank you for being God and God alone. Lord, you are present with us in all that we do, everywhere we go, and in the midst of the things that we struggle with, God, you are with us. You are with us as we celebrate life and as we celebrate this country and our freedoms. And for that, we say thank you, God. Lord, there is so much that goes on in our life, whether it's health issues, whether it is home issues, whether it is work issues, God. And so, Lord, we just ask that you be present. Lord, so often you say turn right and we turn left because we are walking in the flesh, Lord. So we ask that you put your hands upon us, God. You brought friends into our lives. You brought people into our lives who... Not only do they depend on us, but we depend on them, God, and we just ask that we be better friends, that we be better spouses, we be better companions, whatever it is that we are, God. We also ask that we make better decisions. Lord, let us be good parents. Let us be all that you have created us to be. For those places where we've fallen short, Lord, we ask for forgiveness. We know we do not always make the right decisions, but in you all things are possible and we can go down the right road. Lord, now as we begin to worship God, we lift our hands and praise, we celebrate, we do all those things because of your awesomeness, because of your grace. We celebrate and lift your name on high in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're small in number, but mighty in praise. Amen. Amen. Let's praise the Lord. Let's all stand as we start singing. This song may be new to some of you, but I think a lot of you already know it. It's a good one.
get on that train and just keep going. That's great. So the next song we're going to do is a medley of some old Southern gospel favorites. So definitely you should be clapping and stomping and having a good time. Um, Because I think for all of us, it invokes memories of back in the day. Everybody says that now, but of really back in the day.
great job. You may be seated. Rusty's coming. In trouble. <laughs> so, like, anybody ever heard of that kind of music before? That kind of music. Okay. So if you if you know the history, then oftentimes that was in a in a small church, like a small white Calvinist church, and to be in the summer, and Katie and I were talking about the funeral home would give the church fans, and people would be sitting there with a fan like that, and the windows would be open, and there'd be like 18 people in the church, and they'd be so loud, the neighbors would be like calling the cops because the church was so, people were singing like, and there were 18, and we've got more than 18. So not many more, but maybe more than 18, right? So we gotta make some noise, like we believe that there's a God and we love him, amen? All right, let's pray. Thank you so much for being that God, the God of 1 and 2 and 18, the God of 1,800 million billion, the God of the universe, the God who says each and every one of us is everything to you. May we believe that. May we know, gracious God, that that is your message to us, and you call us for it to be our message to the world. May the reading and hearing and believing of this scripture, gracious God, plant that deeply in our hearts so that it grows and grows until it consumes us. In Christ's name, amen. Our first reading is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, one you have likely heard before and one that is so important for us to remember. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. From Paul's letter to the church at Colossae, or what we call Colossians chapter 3, our second reading. Since then you have been raised with Christ... Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Thanks be to God for his word to us today. Amen? Okay, so here's the question. What's your greatest treasure? Jesus talks about treasure here. What is your greatest treasure? You have less, uh, we have to have more conversation today, so, because there's less people to do it. What, what is your greatest treasure? Freedom. Oh, that's a good 4th of July answer. Thank you. Say again. Family. Faith. Health. Love. Y'all are all wrong. <laughs> you're all right. You're absolutely all right. But you're actually... That's not. There really is a real answer of what the greatest treasure in all the world is. There really is an answer. Do you know what it is? It's you. That doesn't sound like the standard Christian answer, does it? You are not. We need to not. I mean... I, all the books, it's not about you, it's not about me, it's not about I'm supposed to give all myself, blah, 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 blah. So I'm going to argue with that for a minute. We're not going to go the selfish route, so don't, don't, don't get upset with me yet, okay? You can get upset with me later. There are places later you'll probably be ready to be upset with me, but it's you. I'm going to prove it to you. Jesus Christ left heaven. To come here. He didn't do it for the Starbucks coffee. He was born in a manger, in a lowly, lowly place, to poor people. He lived and spent every single moment of his life giving everything that he is, and then dying on a cross for one purpose, you. That means that the God of all the universe of all time gave up his life 
for you. Now, if you would like to argue with me that you are the most important treasure in the world and disagree with Jesus, I offer you the microphone. Who would like to come up and argue? Anyone? You are God's treasure. So much so that he so loved you and me and us that he would give up his only son that we may have life. Now there's a second part to that. Since we are God's greatest treasure and have been given that blessedness of Jesus Christ's spirit because when he died and Pentecost came, he said, here is my spirit. The very thing that I, Jesus said, walked on the earth with, did miracles, was able to love everybody, no matter what, that thing inside of me, the me that is God, I give to you. You are my treasure. And so I fill you now with grace, mercy, forgiveness, and the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to see and believe like Jesus. So not only are we God's treasure in that he adores and loves us, but also we are his treasure in that we now are able to be filled with a power that nothing else in all the universe, no one, nothing, not money, not job, not anything else can even come close to. And that is the ability to have within us and share outside of us the presence of God. Now, how cool is that? How amazing is that? Did you know you were that cool? Did anybody know that? So what does that mean? Store up for yourselves now treasures in heaven. Are we God's treasure? One more time. We are God's treasure. Remember, y'all got to be loud. Are we God's treasure? Yes, awesome. So each one of us, you, the individual, are God's treasure. And you have this amazing power of God in you to love the world like Jesus, which is what store up treasure in heaven means. So here's the thing. In this great big world of all the things that go on, technology and all the amazing things going on in the world today, can one person really make a difference? Can one person be God's treasure and live from the inside out so that the world out there, as big and powerful as it is, doesn't define me so that I define it. Did Jesus do that? Did Jesus define the world? What's the best-selling book of all time? The Bible, hands down. Did Jesus define the world? Yes. One person did all this amazing stuff. Jesus said, now, you have inside of you, inside of you, you are my treasure. You have inside of you the great treasure, and you're able to share that treasure with all the world. So I ask you, can you, the individual, make a difference? In all reality, can you? Can one person change the world? Can one person affect the lives of others in such a way that it changes the world? If you disagree with me, I will ask you, has anybody heard of a man named Donald Trump? Or a man named Barack Obama, Ronald Reagan, George Bush, Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. You know what they all have in common? One person. Do their decisions change our lives? What would it be like if the one person that drove the trash truck decided not to pick up your trash? Would it change your life? What if your vet decided not to be a vet anymore? <laughs> what, does your doctor's life change yours? Or the world's? The EMS people, do they change the world? One person. Does one person have the ability to change the world? All right, I'm going to come down there in the middle of y'all if y'all want to get some use in you. Come on now. Can one person change the world? Yeah. Are you one person? Yeah. Are you God's treasure? Yeah. Do you have the power of God within you? Yeah. Okay. Now you're getting it. There's a man named Rick Hoyt. You may have heard about this guy. I've shared this story once before. Rick Hoyt was born with a disease that kept him from using any of his muscles. The doctor said to his parents, 
He's not ever going to do anything. The umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck. He could not breathe. All the oxygen was cut off. He was born alive, but that's it. He's never going to be able to do anything. He will use all the money you ever have. You will be poor and broke, and this child will never respond to you. Put him in an institution and be done. They wouldn't do it. They kept working with him over and over and over. One day, his dad, Dick, saw his eyes move. He said, I think my son is in there. He took him to all of these schools. They, they went to all the hospitals. Eventually, technology caught up with him. They were able to communicate with their son, Rick, who they found out was extremely intelligent. He just simply could not use the muscles on the outside of his body. But inside, he was this incredibly loving, intelligent person. So he was now able to communicate limitedly and it, with his father and his mother, and he went to college and graduated from college. Unbelievable, amazing. And, and he told his dad, one day, I really want to help people with disabilities. And his dad said, it's going to be tough, but we'll figure it out. Okay. He said, Dad, I saw that there is a 10K that I want to run to support people with disabilities. And, and his dad was like, son... You're amazing, but he goes, Dad, I want you to run it. His dad was 36 years old, never ran a day in his life, overweight and out of shape. But inside, even though his body was not meant for it outside, inside he loved his son. His son was his treasure. So what do you think Dick did? Bought some running shorts, bought some running shoes, and went running. Since that time, they have run over 1,100 races and run the Boston Marathon, third, completed it 32 times. They have raised huge amounts of money and inspired people all across the world. That no matter what your outside is like, it is your inside that drives your life. The outside world and your outside body and all the things that are out there in the world do not define you. It is what is inside of you that can define the world outside. Amen? So if you got good hair, good for you. If you don't, there's still hope. If you're rich... You have a great opportunity to do amazing things. If you're poor, you have a great opportunity to do amazing things. What is our perception of the world? Do you ever turn on the news and get scared? Take or come across whatever website you use, Google, Yahoo, whatever. Do you ever turn on the news and go, man, the world is going to Hades in a handbasket? You start pricing alarm systems and security systems. Drive through a bad part of town and lock the doors. Do you ever worry about you to the point that you care less about everybody else? You know what Jesus did? He didn't run from danger and problems and hurt and pain and loss. Do you know what he did? He ran to them. Because greater is he that is in me than anything that is in the world. So I ask you this question. What is God's treasure? Yeah, we, we're going to have to go in a little while. <laughs> what is God's treasure? Yeah, come on, for real. What is, I want you really to understand how important it is for you to believe this. Because there ain't but about 27 of us here today, okay? But I want us to realize that one person change the world and you have that person inside of you and that world out there needs our help Jesus thought that was so true that he gave up heaven to come down here to love and die on that cross for us 
He didn't run from it. He ran to it. And now that's in us. And he said, the most precious thing in all of the world to me, in all of the universe, I'm spitting now, in all of the universe is you. I will do anything for you. And I believe, Jesus says, I can do it. I believe I can. And he did it. And now we have that God in us. Our eyes from the inside are Jesus' eyes. Our heart from the inside is Jesus' heart. It's not about money, and it's not about job, and it's not about house, it's not about car, it's not about career, it's not about beauty. It's about the heart of God in you and me, looking out at the world and saying, you are not my competitor. You are not my nemesis, and you are not my threat. You are my treasure. I'm like, God loves you. I love you. And I would give anything if you will let me love you back. For that is the same mind that Christ has. And so in truth, no, it is not about us. But God has made it about us. He has made us his treasure. And he has given us the ability to make the world and the people in it our treasure. So that we are not as concerned about locks on our door and taking care of ourself as we are about realizing that everything we have been given is an opportunity for us to be like Christ and love one another and find ways with every single person, and sometimes the more challenging and difficult, the better, to with that person store up for ourselves treasures in heaven. You can do it. I can do it. It's what God wants us to do. It's what we're here for, y'all. God loves us that much. And he says to us, do not be defined by what the world calls treasure. But know inside, there is nothing more precious to me than you. And if you believe that, you will see with the eyes of God and love with the heart of Christ. And know when you walk out into this world and when you look at one another that there is nothing more precious to you than that person that is beside you and the God who fills you with the love for them. May we go from this place knowing that Donald Trump ain't got jack on us. Neither does Barack Obama. Neither does Abraham Lincoln. For we have within us the greatest power of all powers, the power to change the world. And if we believe it and live into it, we will change the world. And in so doing, store up for ourselves the greatest treasure the world can ever know. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. It is a time for us to be able to receive our offering. Know in this time that we are called to live inside out. All you have been given, you have been given for a purpose. That purpose is to love the world. 
So I invite you. We have the amazing, beautiful, handcrafted receptacle on that table over there for us to put our resources into. I, of course, I invite you to do that always and forever. As you make that walk over there, please consider. If it's money, great. If it's creativity, great. Whatever it is, if it's a skill or ability you have, if it's a kind word, if it's a promise you want to make to yourself to go out today and do something in the name of God to help this world, whatever it is, offer it to God. And watch it change the world. Amen? Amen. Let us sing, let us receive our offer. I want to read a scripture for you. It's Jeremiah 29, starting at 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for a future and welfare, not for evil, to give you a future and hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places that I have driven you. And I will bring you back to the place from where I sent you into exile. Our next song reminds us of that. It talks about the plans that God has for us. So I just want you to sit back and listen. Close your eyes if you want, but not as you're walking, um, so that you can hear what he has for us.
Forget politics. Forget scales of magnitude. Just know God loves you. That God is in you. Forget the treasures of the world. And know that you are God's treasure. And I promise you this. If you believe that, if you know, you know. Nothing will compare. Nothing. No matter what the external circumstances are that we have, nothing will compare to how we experience life in God that way. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you, you do that, there ain't no stopping anything. Anything. I promise you, because God says so. You are God's treasure. May we see the world the way he does. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may this day we all know that we are his treasure and he is ours for all time. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our benediction. This is holy ground, we're standing on holy ground, for the Lord is present, and where he is, is holy, this is holy
week.